Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers and today we've got a couple of things we want to be sorting out and uh, as you can see we've got a nice view of our ship that we built on the last episode and you'll just notice in this image here the flickering of our survival kit now there's a reason behind that is because whilst I was off camera I went and grabbed a lot of resources so that we could do this quicker so you'd have to watch me mining now that's the only thing I've done off camera is uh, basically mined. I mined in the hole we made and I've just done one that's just slightly off the base as well where there was some silicon. Thankfully the hole we made where the cobalt was had iron and nickel. So we got all the iron and nickel we needed and I've got some silicon as I say from just outside the base. So we are good to go with resources. However, there's a couple of problems we've got. The first problem is, is our ship is now pulling power from our base. And our refinery and assembler are both requiring power as well. Now, them three things together, plus our O2 H2 generator, is just way too much for our little wind turbine. And we want to look at a better way of getting some power. Now, there's a couple of things we can do. Now, as you can see, I've just penciled out here another wind turbine. And if I go to here now, now there's a couple of things, first of all, before we go to that wind turbine that I want to spring up our UI, that I want to comment on. The first one is is that turning your engines off actually stops them taking power from the ship so even though you're draining the base because we'll we'll see that because there's a big red marker there you're actually draining it less because you don't know um thrusters now you can turn your lights off as well but the lights don't really use too much and you can see that if we go inside i did paint a little bit uh, a little bit of black on it and you can see straight away that we are using way too much too much power on our base there's two things that we can see here well, one we can see and one we can hear. One is, is if you look at the bottom right bar, it's flashing red all the time. It means it's just generating uh, too much demand than what the base can provide. The second one, you can hear the refinery clunking. That's telling you it's not getting enough power, so it's not providing you with decent amount of ores to run through. Now, talking about the thrusters, the first thing you want to do is you want to jump into your K menu again and you want to find all your atmosphere thrusters. You want to find them all. If you shift and click, you can drag them all. Now, if you are worried that you might want to, you know, you might click onto something you don't want to. If you actually type thrusters into here, it will actually bring you up anything to do with thrusters plus any groups you've created. Now, if you click here, you'll see it says block groups nothing. However, if you click on this group here, if you've already created one, it will highlight what's in that group. So just be wary of that if you do. But you can just shift click, type in what you want, and you can call it that by pressing save. Now, I've already gone ahead and done that because obviously, as I say, I wanted to get a little bit ahead so that we weren't dragging our feet when we come to doing this episode. So I've gone and called it mining ship thrusters. Now, the only thing I didn't do was is I didn't put it onto my bar, which is exactly the same as what you do with the battery and the connector. But it's in groups. If we go to our groups here. My next year thrusters, drag that on. And we can toggle block on off. We've got the option now to turn them on and off. Now, what about our lights? Well, if we have a look at our interior lights here. These here are... They're not really going to cause much problem. But if you do want to, you can just drop them there. Now, if we call them... Utility ship lights... Save that there. Again, get another little group there. Now, if you're building a lot of ships or you're building sophisticated systems, you might want to start getting used to actually calling your um, your items, you, you, whatever they are, your components, uh, actual names. So you got like a utility ship auto light one or something like that. You can you can call it something like that because when you come to doing like programming or you know making groups do things and stuff like that because you've got all sorts of things you can do really like sensors you know automation all sorts of stuff so just get into the practice of calling things like that if you are going to do that if you're just going to build one or two things and have a play around with it don't bother it saves you time but we've sorted that out so now we can drag our light in our board as well and we can switch them off back on off there we go. So our lighting is now off. And you can see it still made no difference. In the grand scheme of things, it's not really going to make a massive difference between being able to power your refinery or not. Now, if you're running lots of lights, then yeah, then it will make a difference. But it's not. 
And you can see I've just placed a little bit of black on that. Um, just to make it look a little different instead of it being bright yellow. Now, there's a couple of things I want to go through. You'll notice now our thrusters are all off. Everything's off. We've, we've put it as much as we can. Other than turning off the, the detector, there's nothing else really that's going to cause us problems with power. And you can see we're still not really charging. Now, if we go in and we see what it's going to do. So if we find our ship, uh, you can do that by clicking in utility minor th um, batteries. Uh, fully charged in five hours. It's going to take five hours to charge this ship. But you'll have a little bit of power so you can do some jobs and whatnot. And it's given me enough power to do it. But you can go ahead and place yourself another wind turbine up. If I just weld this up now, we can see that it'll help things a little bit. But it's not going to help in the way we want it to, so there we go. Both them wind turbines are at optimal peak performance, they're both green, they're both operating. And as you can see, there's, there's nothing else around it, it's good, it's good, we're good. You notice our battery's still red. But our refinery has stopped making a noise. Oh wait, it is still going. But you'll notice now it's not clunking as much, it's a lot faster. It means it's getting a lot more power, so it's, a lot, it's doing a lot more, but it's still not quite there. It's still peaking out. So as you can see, two wind turbines isn't helping the job. Now, you could go ahead and whack a third or fourth on, and you might get enough power to run everything you want. How is it doing for our ship? Batteries. Fully charged in six hours. It's gone up. Because what it's doing is, is is it's allowing more power through to the refineries and it's not actually helping your ship. And that battery is actually probably the lesser one. No, no, they're all the same. It's not helping our ship out anything whatsoever. We're still having problems with our refinery. It's not flickering as much, so it'll probably be doing more. As you can see, it's doing a lot more there. Switch that over. We've got plenty of cobalt. But it's still flickering. I'm not going to have as much, look at that, just draining everything. So what's the response we can do? Now, I want to start building an actual base and I want to move away from this setup here because obviously I've mined the ground here and aesthetically I don't like it. So I've gone ahead and I've just like to lower the blocks down to here and this is where I'm going to start building my new power supply. And this realistically is where I'm going to start building my new base. Now, I'm not going to remove anything of what I've done there until I'm fully set up here. It's all usable, it's all still good stuff. I'm still providing it with power, I've still got a battery backup, I've still got my miner going there, I've still got the resources going, and I can move back and forward as and when I want. However, I do want to move everything here. Now, there's a couple of things I want to do, and there's one thing I suggest you do uh, when you're doing your own base, is, is actually going on to solar power, power if you're on a planet with a sun. Now, most of the planets gets the sun quite nicely, and there's a couple of things we can do to make it a little bit better. The placement of it and using something called a script. Now, I could try and script it myself, but most likely I'm going to mess it up and it's not going to be any good. So, thankfully, someone has gone out there and done a script. And this is his solar script. And what that does is it will direct the solar panels to where the sun is. And then it's the first time it does it. It's a little bit clunky and not working it out but on the second attempt it, it knows where the sun's going to rise and where it's going to fall so it'll automatically rotate there and rotate back re ready for when the sun comes up as well it's a godsend and it is so much better and it can provide you with so much more power alongside using wind turbines so you can have that that nighttime top up of power just to keep your base going and then during the daytime You'll get a surge of energy through which will charge up all your batteries and hopefully we'll get to be able to actually have a battery backup that's got some battery power in it so let's get ourselves set up so the first thing i want to do is i want to think about the height because i don't want to be building it too low because you're going to have clearance when it comes to your solar panels now i want to make it nice and big and nice and in the air now remember there's no no restrictions to where the power is going to go in terms of you know like how far down you can you're gonna have to be until it runs out of power it'll run through everything one two three four five so let's make it let's see how high 20 blocks is oh now that block isn't connected 
Right, so is that going to be high enough? Probably is. And then I can build off to the side. So let's go ahead and have a think about building solar panels. Now, there's a couple of things you can do without chucking yourself off to the side of the base. Oh, there's a couple of things we can do here. Now, I mentioned about the build planner and about using it in ways that we've done. There is another way you can use the build planner, which is a little bit easier to keep a track of what you're actually doing. And that's actually by using the G menu. You can see here, I've set up the build planner for what I'm going to need. Now, the only other thing that I haven't got on here is the programming block. And I've left that off just so I can show you what to actually do. Now, as you can see, it'll hold a maximum of eight items. I'm going to build it with three rotator, uh, rotors and four solar panels. So that effectively has one rotor for its left and right turn. And one rotor... Uh, sorry, two rotors, one for each arm, for it to be able to oscillate back and forward, so it'll capture the sun's direction by going, you know, back and forth. We're then going to need the programming block, so it'll run the script, and obviously we're going to need four solar panels. That's two on each side. We've got arms, we've got the solar panels there, and hopefully we can have it rotate nice and easily. We're not going to need the light armor block. I've placed that there just to show you that after eight, it completely fills it up. So you can right click and remove it. It says here, click to add selected block variant or drag and drop the block here. Middle mouse button on a block to quickly add it to the build plan. So you can just middle mouse button on that, or you can drag it along. Or if you highlight it, you can then press the plus sign and it will add it to it. You can then go to your... So in this menu, you can go to this little setting here, which is exactly the same as what we were using before. Add components from build planner to production queue. If we set that there, we then go to our production, you can see it's queued it all up. Now, what I will say is, is I've actually queued all this up, so we've got the resources in. So what I can do is, if I middle mouse button to re withdraw, you'll see it says, cannot withdraw nine, nine construction components, etc, etc. What it's doing is trying to remove everything. But what it will do, is it will remember what it's not been able to put into your inventory. So it's deposited the rest of the stuff and we're just short on them two things so we can actually start building it if we head on over there and then we'll remove that but right, actually we'll keep that on there because i'm going to need that and then i'm going to place my rotor on there and then i'm going to place the solar panel So these are the three basic components when we're coming to build it. The first one, obviously, as I mentioned, is to make it able to rotate around. The rotor is comprised of two components. The bottom section, which you see when you're placing it down, and the top section, which is the head. Now, you cannot place a rotor head first. Because that allows for clearances and different sized heads. So, unfortunately, you can only place it one variant way. Which is that way. However, when you've placed it down, it will then give you the option to place on top of it. I'm going to place three blocks on here, just so I can give myself a little bit more clearance behind that. I'm then going to place one block on either side, again a little bit of clearance, then I'm going to place more rotors. Now even though we don't have the components for the third rotor, we can still place it down as a place marker. And that there is basically our wind, uh, sorry, our solar tower and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to place blocks down like so now there's a couple of things to remember when doing something like this i'm just going to place one two three four five six i'm going to place six on either side now there's a couple of things to note with the rotors it's is they're very sophisticated pieces of kit when it comes to space engineers there's a lot of things you can do with it. you can do a minimum and maximum distance you can do yeah. Clearances, oh, we're going to drop to the ground, so I'm going to shoot on down here like so. Fuel critical. Top up our fuel while we're here, while I discuss it further. So as I said, they're quite, quite smart pieces of kits. Yep. You can do a lot of adjustments to it, and when it comes to building stuff at, a, at an advanced level, that it's going to be very important. However, when they're in this state, they are basically free movement they they have no abilities to control themselves or anything like that and what i mean by that is if i place a block here like so 
you'll see that it actually rotates and it starts gaining momentum and it's starting to rotate the other one but when you build you just bear that in mind now if you want to stop that from happening you can stop that from happening all you do is if you weld it up like so to its first section what it will do is it will place a lock on the rotor because it's now trying to operate against its internal mechanism if I place them back on like so you'll see it locks into place because it's basically saying that there's now components inside this that effectively are what drives the motor so you can't push against that it's locked don't confuse that with rotor lock because rotor lock stops the rotor itself from moving so if you set that to move naturally like a, a 360 degree rotation and then you place a rotor lock on it it locks itself that's uh, a momentum lock so to speak and then another thing you've got to know is that it's as i said it's in two components you've got to remember to weld the head like so there's a few things we're going to concentrate on and it's this first one is this here this little line here is the zero marker that's obviously rotating with the head there's your zero marker on the body itself if you were trying to have this sit in a specific direction these are the things we would use but since we're using easy solar alignment i'm not going to go into that detail yet we'll go into that later down the line when we come to actually building things that require minimum and maximum um, distance travels and stuff like that and clearances and stuff there's, there's a lot of things we can do now because we placed components on the other stuff we've not got enough to actually build that we're missing two large steel tubes that's probably because I did the heads because what it's not doing is it's not including the heads as well do why it's not that but it does it energy okay low. oh we've got energy low problem all oh, right we can go back and do it now I like to keep it where everything's in the same direction I'm gonna place down my panels like so rotate it so they're facing the same way now you'll notice as I'm placing them down like four little buttons they look like buttons on this but they're not they're indicators as to how much sunlight they gain I like to place them at the bottom because it just it feels more like it should be that way and what I do is I tend to rotate it around. That's what it looks like on the other side. I like to have it where the light that because one, it, it feels natural. We're out of steel plates, so we're going to need to get some more steel plates anyway. It feels more natural being that way, plus it's a little easier when it when you come to actually um, seeing if they, they, they're basically working. And um, just makes it that a little bit easier to kind of glance at rather than having to try and chase it down. Right, let's get a hundred of these. I'm just going to grab some extras then because I've obviously used them but what we want to do now because we've built everything and as you can see our production queue is empty then what we had in our build planner is now finished so if we now middle mouse button again all components were successfully withdrawn in theory everything we asked for should now be in there sometimes it misses one or two things uh, but hopefully and what I did do is I actually put an extra panel here so we'll remove that panel for now panel here sometimes it does miss components it's not 100 percent accurate but it's pretty damn close and it just makes it that little bit easier there we go and we'll leave them out of ones for a later expansion so all there is left to do now is to weld everything up and place the programming block i'm going to place the programming block here because later down the line i'm going to probably encase this in so it's a little bit more secure so we're not just stuck out here and there's obviously a few things we can do as well um, to make this a little bit more secure. So if we get our programming block. Critical. Now, you want to rotate it. So you want to place your cursor so it's on the bottom deck. You want to rotate it so the screen is facing you. If you click there, the screen is actually now there. You can just see it there. It's, it's facing downwards. So just bear that in mind doesn't need to be directly connected to what you're doing I just place it there so I know it, it's referencing that you don't need to place that there and as you can see we're short on two large steel tubes we're going to be short on that one as well because what it's doing is, is it's not taking into account the heads so just bear that in mind the reason for that being is because if we go back to our G menu and go to our rotor 
What you're actually building with the rotor is the body of the rotor. You'll see it doesn't include the, the, the head of the rotor. If we want it to include the head of the rotor, we can add the rotor part, like so. For an advanced rotor, it's the exact same thing. It doesn't include the heads. I don't know why it does that, it just does. But we can go ahead and do that, and then we can go to our base and we can tell it to build. Now, the likelihood is, is it's probably going to have that in there, because I obviously built extra stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to charge my power up, I'm going to weld everything up, and then we'll be back once we've weld welded everything. And welcome back everybody, and as you can see we've got four panels welded up. Now, I know just a second ago I had four on either side, but I realised that I'd actually queued four in total. And for some reason I'd started building four, uh, four on either side, so I've now welded them up as what we agreed upon. And as you can see, the rotors are complete, and the solar panels are complete. This is the bare minimum, plus the um, programming block that you need to basically get your solar tower working now I will expand it and I don't mind having these sticking out because I can see where I'm going to expand it uh, my energy is low so we'll just grab some energy while I discuss a couple of things now if you notice then you'd see that they had yellow lights on them it's night time you're going to get no power whatsoever on your solar panels this is the downside to solar panels however during the day we're going to see a massive increase in power and I want to show that to you in just a little second now now as they are they're not going to do absolutely they're going to do nothing at all and I'm going to run out of uh, hydrogen, so I may as well pull that up while I'm here as well. Now, the sun will creep up here, so they're actually pointing in a good direction. So they will start to pick up the sun. Now, there's the yellow, yellow lights I was talking about. They're on standby, basically. They're waiting for sunlight, and they're going to do nothing. Sunlight's going to come, it's going to go overhead, and these are going to sit still. The rotors are just for show at the moment. We're going to have to do something with the uh, programming block to sort that out. Uh, now let's drop down to the programming block because I can show you in the programming block uh, what I mean about the power supply. If we go into here, we'll discuss this in a second, but the first thing I want to do is I want to go to my battery. And you'll see here it says max output is 12 megawatts, max required input is 12 megawatts, max stored power is 3 megawatts. Current input, current output, 0, 0, 0. Everything's 0 because it's completely bypassing the battery because we're basically supping the uh, energy clean out of the uh, wind turbines max output current output max output current output there is absolutely no available power whatsoever to go into our battery you'll also notice that our, ba our batteries on our ship are also draining power now if you're in a rush and you and you you know you're not going to need anything um in the near future about your ship you can go ahead and you can even in this menu here nowhere near it you can go ahead to your batteries and you can switch them from recharge to auto What that's going to do is it's going to provide the base with some power, but it's going to keep your, your ship powered up enough to keep it connected. But it shouldn't, shouldn't drain it completely. You'll also see here that we've still got maximum powers, but our battery is now starting to drain what power it can out. The other three batteries, plus the turbines, the base is using this other battery here, which has got power, and these three, power, three batteries now. It's using all four of them. But obviously this is still trying to keep hold of some of it to try and charge yourself up as are these but since we're not going to use them well since we want to use the um the miner at a later stage and i want to show you the efficiency of the solar towers and also another thing that we're going to do with it when we put is this solar um solar script that's the one that's the word i was thinking of once we've got is this solar script on though we can see that we've got a few now, the other thing I would recommend you do, uh, but you're completely not obliged to do it, is actually weld up all of these supports here, because a well-placed hit here will take out your entire tower. Now, what I tend to do is I actually tend to have it where it's, it's like a, a grid going up. It's got a few defenses on it as well. Now, another thing to point out with this is if you place a turret, and we'll get to turrets at a later stage, if you place a turret here, there's two problems with this. Number one, there's no way of restoring uh, restocking its um, supply um, automatically you'd have to do it manually unless you alter the entire platform which we can do and we can talk about that later but the second thing is is if if you have an enemy coming in and you're tracking it here it will actually shoot through your solar panel and if the ship happens to drop below it'll shear your panel clean off I've had it happen we actually had it where a meteor strike hit directly on this bottom section here and collapse the entire tower on a moon base 
Uh, it went floating off, blew up, and we lost all our power. So it can happen, so don't think, ah, it's fine. You know, obviously, it can't happen on this map because there's no meteors on this map. Uh, I've turned them off while we do our guide. Um, however, if you're running standard settings, so you're likely to have meteors. Uh, that's the environmental difficulty. If you set it to safe, then you're absolutely fine. If you set it to normal, you'll get meteors every so often. And they, they, they are completely random, but they happen more often than not. Now you'll notice that the sun is just starting to creep up, but we're still not getting any power into these solar panels because the actual direct sunlight isn't on them yet. Uh, notice that none of them have got any. What we're going to go and do now is we're going to wait until the sun actually gets out, and then we'll see how these are doing for power. So I'll see you all in a second when the sun's out. And there we have another glorious sunrise on the planet of Triton. Now, I want to show you the little green markers. Now, as you can see, these ones have got three on each. Yeah, these have four on each. Now, it's because of the angle this is slightly, it won't be picking up 100% of the sun. I mean, it'll be like a, a smidgen off. And if we, if you actually block it with your shadow as well, I mean, you're not going to notice the difference on the bars, but if you had something big, you'd block it completely. Uh, when, you, when we use the script, you'll see if you put anything in front of it, it'll also actually interact with it to try and avoid it. Uh, good when you're using big ships and stuff like that and you're blocking the sun. But we are now getting a lot of power. So let's see what it's actually doing to our base. So as you remember before, we, we've completely turned off our three batteries to the... Um, to the base so they're just recharge only fully recharged in two hours so straight away we can see that that's going to be recharged much much faster current input 310 so we're still not getting a hundred percent because it can take a little bit more but as you can see we're not getting any battery power there but our refinery Oil detector, basic refinery. Again, all the power it requires. Our assembler is not requiring any power. Everything we've got is now taking up 100% of the power. But if we head on over, you'll see that the refinery is actually getting 100% of power. No longer clicking on and off, clicking on and off, clicking on and off. And if we actually go to use the, our, our uh, survival kit, see, we're not having the problem we had earlier. We've actually got available power. Still not getting any battery power. That's because we're obviously taking up all the power out of these here. Now, if I was to go ahead and I was to turn these off recharge onto auto, and we'll just disconnect ourselves up oh, and turn our thrusters on. Remember to turn your thrusters back on. Completely disconnected from the base. We'll now see that this will recharge much, much faster. Now that's important because obviously I've said to you that, you know, if, if, if you're going to do something with your mining ship, you'd have set it up like I had, where it was on recharge only. We can then go out, we do our mining, we could do our business. This is recharging that when we come back, We've got a couple of options. One, this will probably be finished, or at least it'll have done a lot more of the resources. You can see it's a lot faster now. And you can see it's only got nickel to do, really. Ice is in the generator. Cobalt, we don't need to worry about cobalt too much. We could probably remove some of that, or if you want to keep it in there and let it just work its way through, that's absolutely fine. But we're out and about, we're doing our business. We come back and we reconnect our ship. We'll actually have some power in the base draw from now you're going to completely wipe the base out that's that's a given but you're not going to rely solely on just the batteries on the ship and don't do that like i did there we go turn off everything else it's connected it's going to drain some of that power out of the battery now again see we're completely out again However, it's had a little bit of surge of charge now, so it's got a little bit more power. So if you want to go back out and do something, you've got the option to. It's, it's used up some of that power. You're now storing power whilst you're away. Realistically, the two wind turbines aren't going to do anything. But we can still optimize these even further. Now, if we go to our programming block, we head over to our solar panel. 
we'll see that max in max output is 110.65 and its current output is 5 128 128 and 110 this panel and this panel here are more than likely the two on the left and these two are the two on the right. The reason why it's saying max output and current output and they're both exactly the same is because we're using 100% of our power in our base. Its max output is what it's picking up from the sun and distributing to the base. So they're both exactly the same. Don't confuse max output to what it can actually output. That will fluctuate depending on how much of the sun it gets. Now comes the part where we get our solar panel alignment now what we want to do is we want to edit you can see here public program the constructor code only once every session blah 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 this is a code editor and it kind of tells you how to do a few little bits and bobs if you're into coding and stuff like that it'll help you along your way however first of all what you want to do is you want to browse your scripts now you'll notice here i've got a few of izzy's and i've got a couple of marts these won't be in your inventory what you want to do is you want to open workshop page in browser and then you want to search for Izzy's and there you go they'll all come up here and then you can click on them and you can um, subscribe to them and once you subscribe to them they'll then drop into you can open them up if you want but you can also browse it by clicking on that button and it'll open up your tab and that'll bring up your thing but we're just going to go ahead and we're going to open item in one. Not going to do that. We're going to close it off because we've done it now. If you want to look at it further, as I said, these are the two buttons you want to press here. We're going to close it off, and if you've subscribed to it, it'll be in here. In here, excuse me, sorry. Now we want easy solar alignment. This is a solar panel alignment script that uses rotors or gyroscopes to align solar panels for maximum efficiency. Now this can be done on a space station, it can be done on a ship, it can be done on ground, whether you're using gyros or rotors. Read the instructions on the script, it'll tell you some main features. You can have T-shaped or U-shaped solar arrays, depending on whatever you have. It talks about modded panels, but it'll do most of the stuff. It'll tell you your basic setup, so we're on rotor mode. So it says create a group with all your solar related rotors named solar rotors. Set up a programmable block with the script. Check code, remember and exit and done. No timer required. No game has to be in experimental mode and in-game scripts have to be enabled in world options. We're in experimental mode and if you've got to this stage and you're not, then you need to make sure you have got it on there and you may have to restart, unfortunately, but most people are in experimental mode. Uh, if you're not using it, then don't worry about it. Then you're just going to have to use these as standard solar panels and get rid of the rotors. However, we're going to edit... We're going to find our script. We're going to add our script. You can double click it and it'll come up with all the stuff here. And it's a bigger screen if you want to read through the configurations. Uh, if you're using the gyro, you set that to true. Name of the reference group for gyro mode, blah, blah, blah. It's solar reference. But we're just going to press OK because we've got what bit we need, which is to basically now. Warning, rotor group not found, solar rotor. Script is running in motor, rotor mode because we set it to false on the gyro mode. So we're going to find our three rotors, which are the only three on the base. And we're going to set these to solar panels. Solar rotors, sorry, not solar panels. Solar rotors. Try that again. Just delete the solar panels one. Okay, programmable block. Warning, no batteries found. Don't want to store your power. Script is running in rotor mode. Ignore that, because for some reason I don't know why. I know why. I'll fix that, and we'll go through that in a moment. Script is running in rotor mode. You can see it's, it's, it's going up and down with a few bits and bobs here. Rotation logic. All this stuff here, if you want to get into the itty gritties, then you can do. You can add an LCD as well. And name it and you can set up a little screen it'll show you all the bits and bobs but the most important thing that this thing does without anything else is if you watch you can see it automatically rotating it's a thing of beauty best thing in the game that isn't in the game massive shout out to Izzy because that thing is the most useful thing I have ever seen on any of them you can see Captain Shaq, Captain Jack, Slipski any of them guys will be using it now I figured out why this is being a bit of a bugger, so we're going to turn that on, we're going to disconnect here. 
And I believe what I've done is when I've done this here, if I go to my... Okay. Actually, 5, 6, and 7. What I call utility minor batteries. Lower her down. Put it mag lock. 987. Okay, no, I'm not quite sure why this is not working. This should be working, and the fact that that programming block is telling me that it's not working. Let me just double check again. Let's just flip. Recharge the auto. Go to our groups. Groups. Utility minor batteries. Toggle block on off. You can see the battery is on if I toggle that. Perfect. There we go. Yes. So what's happened is. I didn't realise. I need to change that to toggle block on off actually. So, uh, turn it back on. Eight. Got on. Groups, batteries, recharge on off though. Uh, no, no, apparently it's it's not going to work for me. I'm not sure why this is doing this because normally it would just fully deplete it, but it's, it's registering it as not having a battery. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually remove. Let's first of all make sure we've, yeah, we've got enough resources to build 18 more. We'll, we'll just flip on some uh, power cells, so we'll do 100 power cells. It should manage to do it, I think. Struggling a little bit with power, but we should be okay, I think. Yeah, we've got enough power now. I'm actually going to remove the battery. I don't know why it's playing up. Shouldn't be doing that. Uh, unless I've missed missed something. Should operate just as well. It will say it's got no power. It'll drain it fully, but it shouldn't be coming up as a red marker. Now we need our 80 power cells. But I'll sort that out in a second. It may not change anything. It may literally be that because it's draining full amounts of power that it's not going to give us a battery on the base, but... Normally, even if the battery is in use, the, 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 the script will pick it up. I'm not quite sure why that's doing that. But we're set up. We've got a little bit more power on our base. We've got two little windmills, so they'll could generate power throughout. And we've got two solar, uh, four solar panels, which we'll want to expand. So I'm going to put four, four more on each side, which I'll do off camera so you don't have to watch it. I just wanted to show you that these things are a thing of beauty. Now, you'll notice a couple of things. Let's find our solar panels. Now, a couple of things. Using the script, it'll tell you whether the solar panel is getting 100% or not. 159. So if we go to 100% here, it's just slightly less than 100%. 160 kilowatt is what you're going to get out of one solar panel. If we go to our wind turbines, 400 kilowatts. It's about two and a half solar panels one wind turbine the only thing with wind turbines is that's actually quite compact you may not look it at the moment but when you've got another eight panels on there it's going to produce more than what this is but that to produce the same as what that is or the other way around sorry i'd have to put another 10 blocks on and another wind turbine down there's a couple of other things as well with wind turbines is if there's low atmosphere or reduced atmosphere they're going to be a lot less effective whereas the sun as long as you've got that sun out there you should be good with the solar panels obviously nighttime is adversely different with this with the solar panels but that's another problem for another day or night so to speak the the offset of having them weaker is the fact that they are a little bit more compact and it may sound a bit silly saying that considering it's a giant you know it's a tower sticking out in the middle of nowhere but these things they just stick out everywhere and they just look a little terrible there's another thing as well with these 
and running a single player isn't too bad until you start getting to the stages where you want to have lots of things on there or mods or lots of enemies and stuff like that wind turbines are absolutely terrible for fps and gameplay performance more so on multiplayer games i've had my entire base powered by one solar tower which is run by izzy solar script and it's had about 10 panels on either side and then i've put about another six panels on top of each one that has powered the entire base until i've got to nuclear reactors someone else built a base and had about 30 of these out and no word of a lie you go to my base and you'd have no issues with lag my base was on the moon i had the same sunlight I obviously didn't have any earth so i couldn't use wind turbines but you know i went to his base and i'd lag loading it in and his base was smaller than ours uh, i was i had three people in mind his was one person and another person joined later you'll see the difference between the two if you do it yourself so just bear that in mind that even though yes performance wise in game these are slightly better obviously they're nearly they're more than twice the power that one panel will give you that that can actually be quite compact and your system performance wise these things are horrible because they're basically a com constant moving object they are a constant moving shadow inside them constant moving shadow around the bottom of them and also where they display on the ground as well but a few things to note there with them Okay, so we've now got our power. Aha, and we can also. Let's redo our battery. Oop, not too far there. Let's grab our. Power cells. Oh, we're just 10 short, so we'll add these to 10. So. You only need to do a little zap, and it'll add them. Grab the other. We only need 10, so. Right click shift. Uh, right click drag, sorry. It'll allow you to do 10. Hopefully we can... Put one there. That's fully upgraded, so there's no excuse for this battery to not work. So let's see if it's going to... There we go. It's working absolutely fine now. So there is a possibility it may have become disconnected or something when I was moving a few things around. However, there are blocks on either side of it. It should have been absolutely fine, so I'm not quite sure what's happened. But as you can see, it's green. It's working. It's going to be fully depleted. And it may turn red when it is fully depleted. That will answer my question. But that's how it should look. Then it should be completely blank when it's not got any power. Fully depleted in four minutes. We are draining this base of power. But hopefully... Well, yeah, there you go. We've got two power cells on them. So what we can do is we can share power between the two. But we're, we're good for now. And I think I'm kind of done with power supply of the base for now we, i want to i'm going to put another four on either side off camera so we'll get full power supply when it comes to the next day so hopefully we won't have that issue on the next episode i really want to start building this base a power set good to go we're in our location where we're going to be and i know this has been a bit of a drag about power and a few things that we've covered stuff like that but these are things that people have asked me to cover so hopefully you can bear with me and we can move on to building the base on the next episode. Until next time, everybody, take care for now, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.